In this video, we're going to write the method search to see if a node is inside of a linked list. And the first thing that we're going to do is see if an item is in an empty linked list and how the code would handle that. If head, current, and previous are all equal to null and we make the call list.searOrange. Orange is obviously not in the list because there is no list, but let's see how the code handles it. It would say if head is null, which head is null, we would return false, and that would indicate that orange is not in the list. Next, what we're going to do is add some nodes, and I've added three of them, an apple, banana, and cherry node, with the head being with apple, and current and previous equal to null. Then we're going to make a call on the list to search for cherry. We can see that it's the third item in the list, but let's see how the code handles it. First, we check to see, is the head null, which would mean that the list is empty. Head is not null. It points to this first node here. So therefore, we would go to the else statement. Inside the else statement, we would say current equals head. So current, which is up here, is now pointing to the head node right here. Then we're going to check to see if we enter into this while loop, current not equal to null. This is true because current is pointing to this node right here, not null. So therefore we enter into the while loop. We check the if statement and we say if current get value, this is the value inside of the node, equals key. Well, key is cherry, key and apple are not the same. So therefore we would not return true. We would go down here and move current to the next item in the list. And we do exactly that because this memory reference is pointing to this node in our list, the banana node. So now current is pointing to this node. And then we go back up to the while loop to see if current is null. Current is not null, it's pointing to this node, so therefore we enter the loop. After we enter the loop, we check to see, hey, is this value inside of here equivalent to this value right here, cherry? Well, banana is not equivalent to cherry, so therefore, again, we're going to move current to the next node in the list. The next node in the list, we get it from right here, is this node right here, and now current is pointing to the cherry node. We're going to check the condition again of the while loop while current is not equal to null. It is not equal to null, it is equal to this third node. So we are going to enter the while loop. And then we check if current.getValue equals key. Well, cherry happens to be equal to cherry. So therefore, we would return true and the method would end there. Next, what we're going to try to do is find banana in our list to see if it's in our list. We check first, is head null? No, it's not, because it is pointing to the apple node right here. So we do the else statement, and then we make the first node here current because it is assigned to head. So now both head and current are pointing to the first item in the linked list. Now we're going to check to see if we do enter the loop. Current is not equal to null. Well, that is true because current is pointing to this first node in the list. We go to the if statement and check is apple equal to banana? No, it is not. So we go down here and current moves to the next item in the linked list because the old current's next value was a memory reference pointing to this node right here. And so now current is assigned to the banana node. We once again check to see if current is not equal to null. It is not, it's pointing to this node right here. So we enter in the loop. We say if current.getValue equals key, well, is banana equal to banana? Yes, it is. So we need to go no further and we would return true saying we have found the item in the list or the item is in the list. The last thing that we're going to do is we're going to see if Kiwi is in the list and we can obviously see that Kiwi is not in the list, but we want to see how the code is going to handle that. First, it would check if head is null. Head is not going to be null because it's referencing the first link in the list. So we go to the else statement and then we assign current to head in order to start at the beginning of the list. So head and current are both referencing the first node. Then we check the while loop. While current is not equal to null, it's not. It's pointing to this first value in the list. Therefore, we go to the if statement saying if current.getValue equals key, which it does not because we are searching for Kiwi and this is equal to Apple. So therefore, we go to the next statement in the loop, which is going to move current to the next node in the list by referencing the old current's next value. 
Then we are going to see whether current is null. It's not. It's pointing to this second node right here inside of the list. So we do enter the loop. We check to see is banana equal to kiwi. And we see that banana is not equal to kiwi. So we would go current equals current dot get next. So we look at this memory reference, which points to this node, the third and final node in our list. Now that current is assigned to that node, we go back up to check this condition in the while loop. And current is not equal to null. This is true because it is pointing to the third node in the list, which is not null. So we enter the list. We say is cherry equal to kiwi. It is not. So we would say current equals current dot get next, which is going to be this value right here. Now current is assigned to or pointing to null. And we know that kiwi is not in the list because current is equal to null, and when current equals null, this loop can no longer run. So therefore, we go down to the false statement, and the false statement indicates that Kiwi is not in the list. Now that we finished that method call, we are going to slightly tweak the search method. Instead of a Boolean method, we're going to turn it into an int return method and what it's going to say is where is the item that we're searching for inside of the list and it's going to be indicated by an integer so we create the variable called place and place is going to be zero if it's in the list and if it's the first item it would be the zeroth item we would check right here to see is head null meaning there is no list and we would turn negative one negative one is a common way to say what you are searching for is not in the list the next place that we go in the method to see if the item is in the list would be this if statement right here if this if statement is ever true it would return the place of where the node is located if it's the first time the method runs, it would return the first node or the zeroth node. If it is not the first node, it would come down here and increment the place by one until this condition became true and it would show the place where the item is in the list. If the item turns out not to be in the list and we run through all of this code right here, we would get down here to say return negative one. And negative one again means that the item is not in the list, whether it be empty or whether the item is simply not inside of the list. In this video, we have shown you how to search for nodes inside of a linked list, whether that linked list have nodes in it or not. And we have given you the option of returning true or false to say if the item is in the linked list or an int option to say where is the exact position in the list where the item is located. And if it's not located anywhere, it would return negative one.